For me, every visit to the NGV is a bit like going back to my childhood. It always reminds me of school excursions, of little hands touching the water wall or lying on the carpet and looking up at the Leonard French stained glass work. Australians are great travellers and so I always think about those experiences I've had with friends and uh, my wife. The great experiences of travelling have always been you know, going to cultural institutions and seeing exhibitions. So we see this slice of New York comes to Melbourne. It enables us to do that without going anywhere, which I think is great. And uh, Ellsworth Kelly always reminds me of the Museum of Modern Art, and I think that idea of memories and vacuum cleaners. And sometimes things just make you feel good, and you can't explain why. And this is like the painting version of someone giving you a hug. I love it. This is measuring the universe. Well, it's, it's actually more measuring some people from Melbourne and a few other randoms that come and visit. It makes me feel good because I, I sort of feel like I'm average height. And then someone said to me, actually, most of these people are really young people. I don't believe in people collecting your data by the way, so think about it before you do it. What really strikes you about it is, is that how you can layer everything to become art. So it acts becomes art. And so where it gets really interesting is where people are all the same. And that's where the, the true art of it comes from, which I think is super, super cool. But I think Jeremy's showing off because he's like a basketballer or something. Um, but these cute, these little kids, and then maybe some small humans, and then I'm sitting here in average Rosso. This is not architecture. Le Corbusier um, from 1929 in a lecture. You know, this is where he's just drawing the line in the sand, saying, getting very angry about the people in Taylor's Lake for making McMansion. So he says, don't do it. And that's what the Red Cross symbolises. Stop it. He was a bit of a nutty nudist. I'm not sure whether he did this when he was nude. I think it was at a public lecture, so probably not, but you never know with, with Corb. But it is this great thing where you can be close to something that he's touched and he's created. This is like me here, not touching, not touching. But this is what I love about it. Such an influential architect. You know, the building we're in right now, influenced by this guy. And there, here is all these ideas about getting rid of ornamentation. A house or should be a machine for living. Super, super cool and is sort of where history meets art, so stop it. Oi, what's a chair doing in here? Chair's not art, or is it? I don't know, I'm not the expert. I like furniture, so Marcel Breuer's lounge chair is an absolute ripper as far as I'm concerned. The things I really like about it, there's lots of things I like about it. The idea that you can take handlebars and to, to turn it into to furniture. But the really interesting thing is that all of us have sat on a chair that is a direct result to what he did with these sorts of chairs. Me and me and me in different versions and copies over the years. So its impact is extraordinary. And I think one of the most important things you can take away from any sort of exhibition is what's it got to do with me? And then if you can see a direct line between something that you've sat on and this. The other really interesting thing is, is that all these years later, um, you'd happily have it in your house and sit on that. And so back in the 1920s, you could be sitting back, having a bit of a rest from doing the can-can or something. Probably not the best example. The Charleston, maybe it was the Charleston. It's like, oh, I'm doing the Charleston, so tired. And today, if I had that in my house, I could probably just sit there, kick back, and stalk a few people I went to school with on Facebook. I just love this dreamy sci-fi version of the 1960s with these incredible design items. And if there's a part of this exhibition where you say, I wish this was my house, this is it. The idea at the time where plastic was fantastic and it was going to save the world and it meant the use of plastic was actually about propelling us forward. We look at plastic today as, oh, it's a bad thing, but uh, this is the glory days of plastic. And these red Joe Colombo chairs, I just absolutely love, I'll take 10 of them. But ultimately, what I'd really like to do is get myself a record, play it on the Brown Vega player and jump up there into the conversation pit and eat some burger rings. I may not come up as quickly as you'd like. Hey. Ten-year-old me would lose my mind if I could think in the future you're going to come into a gallery and you can play Space Invaders 
all day for free while mum and dad are looking at some boring art. How good's this? Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Don't know whether you guys know how to play it, but you just... Um... They're coming to get me. Dun, dun, dun. The sound's as iconic, I think, as the imagery, isn't it? I'm actually better than I remembered. Reminds me of waiting for a Dim Sims or a hamburger. Bogan's trying to extort 20 cents out of me at the local penny parlour. Here we go, watch this. Or maybe not watch it. Got it, 100 points. So even then, ooh. Don't do that at home or here. Many of the cynics say that every exhibition is driven by its Instagram moment these days. Well, I don't think that's true. An Instagram moment is just a different version of talkability. But this Instagram moment is interesting because the Instagram handle being the Instagram moment is this perverse and yet exciting moment where Instagram and art eat each other on the bottom. I'm particularly moved by this serpentine type installation that looks, oh, oh sorry, they're just, they're just fine charges. Thank you.